Salt is so delicious, but still so many questions. What is kosher salt? Why is this pink? Is sea salt somehow healthier than normal salt? We got to dig into this. First, what is salt? So to a chemist, salt is a term that actually describes many different compounds. So to them, salt could be any time a positive ion like sodium comes together with a negative ion like chloride to make sodium chloride. But this could just as easily be potassium coming together with chloride or calcium and chloride. So it's a term for a whole group of these compounds. But for the rest of us, when we say salt, we are always referring to sodium chloride because this is the specific salt that we eat and put on our food. Now, where do we find this sodium chloride? There's really only two options. We can find these ancient salt deposits where we sort of have to mine the salt out, or we can use seawater, which is about three and a half percent salt and just evaporate the water until we're left with the sodium chloride or salt. Now, what I want to point out in the beginning is that no matter what brand or type of salt your family eats, it's nearly identical because about 96 or 99 percent of salt is always pure sodium chloride. So salt, the salt we use in our food, is almost all sodium chloride, regardless of what color it, how color it is, how big the grains are, what brand it is, salt is sodium chloride. Let's begin with table salt because this is probably what most of us have in our kitchen or in our salt shaker. So table salt is usually made by just running water through these old salt deposits and as the water is going through it dissolves some of the salt and once the water comes out you can collect it you just need to evaporate the water and you're left with salt. So it's a pretty simple process. But table salt, you, you probably buy in these blue Morton salt containers. You might recognize this container. And table salt is usually 99% sodium chloride or greater. So it's nearly pure sodium chloride. And this is what gives that very white color. It's because sodium chloride crystals are white. If salt is not white, that's because there's some other impurity lending that color to the salt crystals. So sodium chloride crystals are white. And table salt usually comes in these tiny, tiny crystals or grain size. And this makes the salt dissolve slower in our food. It sort of releases that saltiness slower. The one other thing I want to mention about table salt is that you might see it see, um, sold as iodized salt. And all this means is that a teeny tiny amount of iodine has been added to that sodium chloride. And this was actually done many years ago to prevent a disease called goiter. And goiter is a nutrient deficiency disease. It develops in people who don't have enough iodine. And this used to be pretty prevalent in the US and other countries. But what, you know, someone figured out is let's just add a little bit of iodine to salt and people will have enough iodine in their diet and it, it works. Goiter is no longer very common in the U.S. So iodine was added to prevent the, the disease called goiter. And one last thing about table salt is if you look at the ingredient statement, if you flip this container over and you might see a compound you don't recognize. Most often it's magnesium carbonate or calcium silicate. And these are known as anti-caking or flow agents. And so these compounds are added at just a small amount to make sure that your salt remains free flowing and that it doesn't clump up. All right, now to kosher salt. So kosher salt originated for a very specific purpose and that was for the koshering of meat. All this means is that to follow Jewish dietary law, 
Any meat has to have the blood drawn out using salt. So kosher salt was used to do this. Kosher salt is really not that different from table salt composition wise. Both are nearly pure um, sodium chloride crystals. There are two tiny differences and that is that kosher salt usually does not have that iodine added to prevent go goiter. And it also does not usually include an anti-caking agent or one of those flow agents. But for the most part, it's, you know, pure sodium chloride like table salt. The main difference is that what you can see with your eyes and that is that kosher salt usually has a very different shape of crystals than table salt. They're usually much bigger crystals seen in kosher salt. But this is really just a, due to a difference in processing. So kosher salt is usually made by a really slow evaporation of water. And this slow process tends to leave behind these very large salt crystals that are thin but have these jagged edges. So the different shape and size of kosher salt granules is just due to this slight difference in processing because composition wise, it still is, you know, 96, 99% sodium chloride. Now to sea salt. So what makes sea salt special? Well, it's the source that it's from. So we take seawater, that salty seawater, and all we have to do is evaporate that water off. And what do we have? Salt from the sea or sea salt. So I've seen a lot of people try to argue that sea salt is somehow healthier than table salt. And I don't think that's true. Sea salt is still mostly sodium chloride. It's still 96 to 99% sodium chloride. It does, however, have sort of extra minerals or trace minerals that can slightly change the flavor. So you might like the flavor of sea salt better because it contains things like magnesium, calcium, potassium. So sort of it lends a different flavor than just that pure sodium chloride. But health-wise, it's still mostly salt. So it, it's probably not healthier for you. Now to the trendiest salt, Himalayan pink salt. And I know the color is really cool. I really appreciate the pink color, but I do not appreciate all the sort of healing properties people associate with this pink salt because it's really blown up. You can now find this Himalayan pink salt made into lamps, candles, different decorations for the house, bath scrubs, and people think it can sort of cure all these different diseases. And I would like to sort of squash that in a minute or two. I don't think that's a great idea because this salt, it's still 96% sodium chloride. And that, that doesn't have healing properties, right? We usually eat so much sodium chloride that it develops diseases in us as we get older. But anyways, this salt is mined in the Himalayan mountains in Pakistan. And what people tend to sort of point towards to the healing properties is that beyond sodium chloride, there tends to be a lot of other trace minerals within this salt. And they'll say, well, these 100 other compounds have healing properties. But what I want to show you now is the breakdown of what is actually in this pink salt. So this is a website that sells this pink Himalayan salt. And what they did is called a spectral analysis, or basically they tested the composition of the salt. And they have this table of 88 trace minerals, electrolytes, and elements. And, you know, their argument is, wow, this provides all these extra compounds compared to other normal salt. But what I would like to do is we need to look closer at what is actually in this table. And the first thing I would like to point out is some of these are known poisons. Some of these are not good for the human body at all. So let's see what we can find here. So arsenic. Yes, we are definitely not supposed to eat arsenic. So I wouldn't be bragging about that. What else uh, is down here? Should be able to find a couple more. Mercury, that's that's not good. You do not want that in your food and you do not want thallium in your food. And somewhere else on this table is lead, which would bring us up to four different 
items we know are definitely poisons and uh, I would not be bragging about that they are in my product. There are, however, some beneficial things in this table and it contains seven minerals, which we call our macro minerals because we need them in pretty high amounts in our diet. So these macro minerals, we cannot make, our body cannot make, so we must eat them. So that would be beneficial. Let's see what we can find. So sodium is a macro mineral. The problem is we usually eat way too much sodium because sodium chloride is salt and we have a lot of salt in our diet. Magnesium, this is another macro mineral. We need, we need magnesium to live, so that's, that's something good. Phosphorus, sulfur also, that's, that's good for our body. Chloride and potassium. And, you know, you probably know we need calcium. So there's a couple of good minerals in here that, that our body could use. There's about seven of these macro minerals. So, so that is something beneficial to, to this composition of the Himalayan salt. But I don't want you to think these minerals are unique to Himalayan pig salt. We could get these from fruits, vegetables, any other place in our diet. So we don't need to get these from salt. Now this also includes some trace minerals which we need. So these are minerals our body just needs in small amounts or trace amounts. And you could argue that pink Himalayan sea salt has these. There's about 10 trace minerals starting with chromium. We need that in our body as well as iron, manganese. So there are some of these trace minerals that we could use, such as cobalt, copper. So you can see, again, these, these would be useful to our body. Um, but, but again, you could get these from other places in your diet. It's not something that really makes this Himalayan pink sea salt special. Let's do the math. So there are 88 items on that table. Of the 88, we know that four are poisons to the human body. There are about seven that are macro minerals we need in pretty large amounts. And there are about 10 that are trace minerals we just need in tiny amounts for our body. That still leaves 67 items on that list. We have no idea what they're doing in our body. So sure, you could say maybe they have healing properties, but you could just as easily say they probably don't have healing properties because we don't know what they're doing. They could be bad, they could be good, they could be neutral. We have no idea. So I don't think it's a great brag to be like, well, this salt, this pink salt has hundreds of compounds in it when most of them, we don't know if our body even needs them. And do not even get me started on how this pink color is somehow magical in healing because sodium chloride or salt crystals are white. So when they take a color that's different than white, it's really just some impurity or contaminant has sort of lodged itself within the salt crystal. And usually these contaminants get in wherever the salt is mined. So it's usually geographically linked where the salt is from. So what could sort of lend this pink color to the salt that is from the Himalayan mountains? There's a couple of options, but you probably won't like any of them. So it could be something as simple as silt or clay or some other type of dirt that gives this pink color. It also could be some copper got in there or iron oxide, which is rust. So nothing that really strikes me as having healing properties. In fact, when you fork over, you know, double or triple the price to get this pink salt, you're really buying a dirtier salt. You're sort of throwing away your money if you think, you know, this is somehow healthier. I really think it's sort of a scam. Well, that's about a wrap for today. I hope you learned that, you know, salt is salt is salt. There's are all mostly sodium chloride. It doesn't matter which one you use in your house because they are nearly identical. And although sea salt might have a slightly different flavor because of these trace amounts of other minerals beyond the sodium chloride, sea salt is not somehow healthier that for you because at the end of the day, it's still mostly sodium chloride. It's still mostly salt. 
And the same thing goes for this pink Himalayan sea salt. It doesn't have any magical healing properties. The pink color is just from some contaminant where the salt was harvested. It's probably silt or clay or dirt. It's, it's nothing special. So what I would say is salt is salt is salt. It's all nearly identical. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the foods you eat, leave them in the comments section. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. See you later.